Okay, I'm going to try to explain to you how to do this grandma's favorite dishcloth. This is my 40 peg loom. I've marked the middle peg, 20th peg, and I've cast on with my with my crochet hook, um, crochet cast on, starting from right to left, and then putting that last loop on this peg, so that I've cast on uh, three pegs right in the middle of my loom. The first thing I need to do is purl back to the right. It's always a purl row, and it's, then it's a um, a knit row. And I just like to get started this way and I always purl to my right. And then when I'm going to my left, I'm always knitting or e-wrapping and then knitting off. But when I'm going to the right, I'm always purling. And like I said, this is the three pegs to begin with and I've purled to the right. And you give it a little tug, but don't tug real tight so that you can get your, your loops on. Because you're going to take your loops from the back to place on the empty pegs that you're going to make right now because you always have to increase with this grand, uh, grandma's favorite dishcloth. So the first thing I'm going to do is increase on this side. So I'm taking the loop from peg one and putting it in its new position, which is over here on the next peg beside of it. And then that leaves an empty peg right here. And I think Izella's got to make one uh, video somewhere that you could watch and this is basically sort of you're doing the same thing as the make one and I'm taking this number three loop and putting it on the peg right next to it so now I've got five pegs and peg two and four are empty so before we start e-wrapping back to the left we need to get those loops on those pegs and you're going to take your loops from the back of your work, okay? So you just look back behind and getting started, this this very first one is uh, is probably the hardest one to find, but it's it's actually that that little loop right there, right there on the back. And that loop right there is what you're gonna put on your on your your peg that's empty and just give it a little stretch and it'll go right over um, the peg okay and don't worry about how it's looking in the back because until you get a couple of rows done it's not it's not going to look right okay then we've got to come down here we've got to get a, a peg a loop on this empty peg so you do the same thing you look on the back and here's my that's my tail yarn right there and this is my working yarn and you can see if I if I pull that a little tight, see how that snugs that up a little bit? So you can see, and, and the loop that I'm going to grab to put on this peg is right there. So I'm not going to pull this loop. It, the loop you, you're going to pull is always closest, right there closest to the peg so it's actually up underneath here see like that so you just sort of grab that and put it on that peg just like that and then that gives you all your loops and you just pull it down a little bit take your working yarn because now it's time to e-wrap remember I said you're going to e-wrap always e-wrap back to the to the left. Now, you could do a flat stitch I guess too but I always e-wrap them and then you want to knit off. And just remember uh, after you knit off all the way across the next thing you have to do is do your purl row you're never going to take this loop off and place it here to make that peg empty. You're never going to do that until you've purled. So just always make sure that you do your purl row first. So you're always going to do your purl row. And I'm going to do this one more time to show you how to find that loop to put on. Like I said, that first 
uh, time is really the hardest to see. And the more rows you get done, the easier it'll be to see, and you'll get used to where you need to pick up right there on the edge to um, make that um, extra loop. So now we're going to take this first one and take it off and put that loop back over here and peg the side of it to make that an empty peg. I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to take that loop off and put it here. And that one's always easier to pull because it's right there at your working yarn. But you get, give your working yarn a little tug. And now we've got to take from behind. So we're going to look, look from behind again. And I know it's really hard to see. I'll try to get as close as possible. Actually, I need to look around here and see. And usually, it's the it's the loop that's just right there, close to closest to that empty peg. So we're going to hit empty peg, turn around, and it's that loop just right there. You just grab and put that on. Got to do the same thing down here. Come down here to this empty peg. Look on the back. Here's our working yarn. Working yarn. To give that a little tug. And when you give that a little tug, it sort of brings up and shows you sort of what loop needs to go on that peg. And you could take this loop and put it on the peg. I've actually done that before, and I think I will. Uh, but the real loop, I guess, that you need to pull is this one up underneath here. Okay? So it wouldn't be bad if you take that loop, but I prefer give that a little tug. Not not to take that loop, but to sort of go under and you'll see that from behind and you'll see that it's um really the loop sitting closest to the peg. And just put that loop back on, give it a little tug, snug it up a little bit. Okay, and then you're going to do the same thing uh, again by pulling this down and starting your E-wrap back to the left again. Okay, I've done a few more rows, and I just got through purling back to the right, and I need to increase again. So I'll take this first stitch off place that on my new first stitch, first peg here, which leaves me an empty peg side of it. And go down here to the end and take this last loop off that last peg and put it on the new last peg and give the yarn a little tug. Got a little further now so I wanted you to see what the back would look like. So now you're going to come over to the back, like we've been doing, to find that loop to put on that peg. And like I said before, it's usually going to be um, the loop that's closest to that empty peg. So that empty peg right there is right there at my thumb. So I'm going to turn it over. And remember what I said about it's always that loop that's right there at the peg. So you can see I can pull that loop up. And if you pull it with your um, hook, it, it pulls really easily. Um, and then you can just put it over here on your empty peg, like so. We'll come down here to the other end, where my empty peg is. Give the yarn a little tug. This is the empty peg where my thumb is. Give that a little tug so you can see. And after you get a few rows done, like I said, it, it really the, the loop that you pick up just sort of makes itself obvious. And so where my thumb is is the empty peg, and there's there's a loop right there. So just grab that loop and just put it on on that peg. Just like that, and give your yarn a little tug, okay? And now you've got your um, loops again on all the pegs, and then. The next thing you're going to do is e-wrap 
back to the left. Because remember I said you always purl to the right, ear out to the left. And as you can see, after I've done a few rows, it's starting to look um, like a triangle. Because you're working it from corner to corner. Instead of normal, you know, all, using all your pegs, you're going from three pegs to five pegs to seven pegs to nine pegs. You just keep adding a peg um, and increasing. And as you can see, you're, when you're picking up your loops, uh, it really keeps your, your ends looking quite neat, you know, neat looking. So you can see how I've got just a few started, and it's starting to really give me that, um, that triangle look. And then you're just going to e-wrap again back to the to the left. Okay, we're still increasing, and I'm worked e e-wrapped back to the left and knit it off. And now it's time to purl again. And remember, you always increase either side once you've purled. So I wanted to show you a little trick that I do. Um, it sort of help helps so that you don't have to uh, move your pegs at the end. You can do it sort of while you're you're purling. Um, so this very first stitch that I purl, and you know how you're supposed to take it off and put it right back on the peg. Well, at, at this point, <clears throat> since I know I'm going to move it over one peg to the left anyway, I just go ahead and pull it off of the peg. But instead of putting it right back on the peg, I just go ahead at that time and just go ahead and put it on the peg to the left where it's supposed to be. And then that just saves me time later from having to come and just take that off and put it back on. And then I just continue to purl across the rest of the row. And I just sort of helps you to remember that you always increase after you do your purl row because I've already increased uh, there on the left when I actually purled that first peg because I just uh, when I was purling it instead of taking it off and putting it right back on the peg um, I just took it off and and put that purl stitch just right there to the left um, so that I wouldn't have to go back and, and do it uh, later and then I'm just going to keep purling all the way over to the right until I get to that last peg. Just a couple more to do. And then I'm going to actually do the same thing uh, down here at the end. Just do the same thing on the left, same thing on the right, when you're doing your purling row. So I'm getting ready to purl that last peg and remember we ha we have to move this stitch to this peg anyway so when I purl it instead of putting it back on the peg where it came from I just go ahead and put it back on this next peg because that's where it's going to have to be anyway okay so now I've done my purl row and I've increased a peg and I have my empty pegs there okay so then you have to go on the back again find your loops. And remember how I said the further you get along, um, the loops, they just, you, you can just see really easy uh, what you're supposed to pull over. So right here where my thumb is, is my empty peg. And then I look on the back and usually you just sort of like grab, it's, it's usually the closest one right there to the peg. So you just give it a little tug. And you can just see how it just sort of pulls right away. And then you can just sort of put that right there on that empty peg. Like so, okay? And you come down here to the other end. And you can see on the back, right there where my thumb is, the empty peg. Look on the back. And when you, when you take your, your working yarn and you snug it up, you can just automatically see that loop that's supposed to go on that peg because it, it looks a little looser uh, for some reason on purpose. Uh, so when you snug that up, that loop that's closest to that peg where my thumb is, 
is the loop that you're supposed to pick up and put on this peg. And it's very easy. You don't have to tug with it at all. And uh, you can tug it up a little bit, snug it up a little bit more. And so now it's time to uh, go back to the left again and E-wrap back to the left. Okay, I've E-wrapped back to the left um, of my pegs. And so now it's time for me to start purling again. And I'm not going to do the whole dishcloth, but if you look on the back, you can see after a few rows, you get that, you know, it's like a triangle. And so it's going to start looking like your corner-to-corner -corner dishcloth, okay? And here, I'll pull this over here, you can see here's a corner-to-corner -corner dishcloth. Uh, and, and you're actually starting three pegs here, and you're working your way up. So you're working corner-to-corner. -corner. So once you get to the uh, to the last peg, what will happen is you'll keep you'll keep increasing increasing pegs. Uh, let me pull out here just a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. You'll you'll keep working on it and you'll run out of pegs. So you'll just keep increasing, 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 increasing until you get out here and you'll increase to the last peg. And what will usually happen is you'll have one peg left on either the right or the left side. Uh, I don't know why, but that's, that's just what you do. And so once you've been uh, increasing, and like I said, you, you always purl to the right, and after you do your purl row is when you pull, you know, make your empty peg and, and go on the back and find your loop um, to do your um, your in, your increasing. Let me see if I can get a little closer here. Okay. Now, once you've uh, you've increased and you're we're just, we're, just, we're going to pretend like you're all the way um, to that last peg and you haven't got anywhere else to go. And so now you have to start decreasing uh, and going back. And decreasing is just really really simple. But it's you just follow the same rules. Uh, you always increase or decrease after you do your purl row. And remember I said you always purl to the purl to the uh, right and uh, E-wrap knit to the left. So we're going to purl this row all the way across before we start our decrease. Okay, I'm to the end of my purl row, and I'm, this is when I'm going to start my, my um, decrease, okay? And to decrease, all you need to do is just to decrease a peg on each side every time. So after I've done my purl row, and before I do my next, my E-wrap to the left row, instead of taking this loop off and putting it on the peg to the right, you're going to put it on the peg to the left, just like that. And then you're going to come down here to the other end and take this peg, and instead of putting it to the peg, empty peg to the left, like you would for, um, for increasing, you're going to put it, the empty, uh, put it on the peg um, to the right, because now we're going to uh, decrease. Now, after you've put that uh, loop on on that that uh, peg uh, right there, um, and you can do this one of two ways. You can go ahead and e-wrap this peg all the way across, and use those two at the same time and pull them over. I find that a little hard with this cotton yarn to do, so I just go ahead and uh, just knit that stitch over on both sides before I start e-wrapping my row, okay? And so I've decreased, and then now it's time for me to go ahead and e-wrap my row all the way back to the left, because remember I said you always e-wrap back to your left. And once I'm back over here to the left again, I'm going to knit off. Just like so. 
Okay, all the way across. Like I said, now we're now we're decreasing, but it's the same thing. You're doing a garter stitch. You're always knitting a row and purling a row. And after you purl, is when you increase or de de decrease. Okay, I've decreased down uh, to three pegs, and when I was at the three pegs, I went ahead and e-wrapped to the left, and then purled back to the right till I had three pegs with loops on them. And then what I did is I took my left peg on to this one and knit it off, and then this loop onto this peg and knit it off. And then that leaves me with one loop on the peg. And you take that off, move your dishcloth loom, cut your working yarn, use your crochet hook, and take that working yarn and pull it through that loop and just snug it up to end. And so I ended down to one peg or to one loop on that corner. Whereas I started with uh, three on this corner. But it really doesn't matter and, uh, if you give it a little tug. You can see that it sort of uh, straightens up and, and, and uh, looks like two corners, especially when you go in here and you put your um, your border on, it really you really don't notice at all that you started with three and ended down with one, and you've worked corner to corner. So I'm going to scan out a little bit here so that you can see this one that I had done earlier, and um, I started. I think it was this one. I started with three pegs down here, kept increasing all the way up till I ran out of pegs. So on your loom, you just kept going until you ran out of pegs. And then you start decreasing down, all the way down, until one, and then just tie off. And then just take a, um, your yarn. And I like to go ahead and do a, a single crochet row all the way around first before I decide what kind of border I'm going to put on, whether it's going to be double crochet or loops or ruffles or whatever. And that's your grandma's favorite dishcloth. And I hope I've cleared up a little bit of the mystery of how to start and increase and decrease. decrease and, and I hope you have fun making your grandma's favorite dishcloth because they are a lot of fun.